which is more harmful like eating processed food or eating animal based food <laughs> oh what a great question um you know i i know what the animals would say for sure <laughs> but <laughs> you know, sometimes uh it, the question like you know if i have to rephrase it to me it's like should i hurt myself with a knife or a gun <laughs> yeah exactly it's uh, it's a really tough question, but I'll tell you my, my own opinion is if your diet is rich in fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes and nuts and seeds, I, I think you would do yourself more harm by adding processed foods than by adding small amounts of animal products. If you're just thinking about human health, um, because when we look at the blue zones, for example, None of the blue zones are entirely vegan. They all have small amounts of animal products. Some have a little bit of fish, some have a little bit of cheese, some have a little, little bit of, you know, some sort of poultry or whatever. There are some meat in all of these places, but the diet is 90 or 95% plants. It's a very small amount of animal products. Consistently in these long lived regions, they don't use processed foods. It's predominantly unprocessed uh, foods. So if I, that's why I would say probably, and, and, and again, I, you know, I've done research in the Marshall Islands and people for years lived on sort of fish and, and plants and they did very well. Uh, uh, now they eat mostly processed foods and they're not doing so well anymore. They have among the highest rates of diabetes in the world. And so I think, um, uh, you know, when, when you think about processed foods, there's some foods that are minimally processed. So you, you know, you chop them, you put them in, you know, the salad in a bag, you freeze your peas, whatever those foods are not a problem. It's the highly or ultra processed foods are, are the, that are the problem. And these foods are the foods that we extract starch or sugar or fat. We basically, usually it's starch or sugar. We extract and, and you've removed the fiber and the phytochemicals and the antioxidants and the vitamins and the minerals and all of that. You've got pure sugar, pure starch, and then you add fat and you know sugar and salt and additives and preservatives and then you make it into some sort of puffy cereal or or some sort of snack food and not only have you taken out almost everything of value to human health uh, to make the product but you've added a bunch of of what we know can be damaging to human health and so this is just bad news all around and we eat far too many of these highly or ultra processed foods. These foods are really bad news. And that adds uh, like an additional challenge, Brenda, these days with like with so many ultra processed plant-based foods like showing up, right? Every time we go shopping these days, there are more and more plant-based processed foods. And, you know, just a few years ago, plant-based was so healthy because making things from scratch, but now the plant-based world, there is an additional challenge of figuring out, are you eating a minimally processed plant food versus an ultra processed plant food? Yeah, and, and this is really um, uh, interesting because I have a bit of mixed feelings there. Like I love the fact that people can, you know, if, if can get almost anything plant-based. And so they're less inclined to want to eat the animal products, which I think is wonderful for the, the planet and for animals. But we do have to be really conscious that, that um, you can buy almost any version of, whether it's ice cream or, or, or some snack food, you can buy almost anything in a vegan version or a plant-based version. Now, to me, there are some processed plant foods that are really good additions to a plant-based diet. For example, these um, plant-based or no, are non-dairy milks that are fortified. So when you have a whole food plant-based diet and you add some unsweetened soy milk or unsweetened almond milk or something like that, you get an extra 300 milligrams of calcium per cup, you get some vitamin D, you get some B12. And this can help to make it easier, especially for families to, to get an adequate diet. 
so, and you can buy things like um, uh, plant-based nut cheeses that are prepared in a similar way to dairy cheeses. They're fermented and they have, pro, you know, all of the probiotics and so forth, um, non-dairy yogurts and so forth that are unsweetened as opposed to the ones full of uh, sugar. Some of even the veggie meat um, can make it easier to be vegetarian. So when you're going you know, your kids are going out with the scouts or the girl guides or whatever, and everybody's doing a hot dog, they could have a tofu hot dog along with or a burger if everybody's doing burgers. And there are degrees of sort of processing even within those categories. So some plant based burgers are relatively unprocessed. So they have added salt and such, but they're made with, you know, chickpeas and vegetables and so forth. Whereas some are made from isolated proteins and they are more heavily processed. But even those are better than the meat they're replacing, in my view. And, and they're better for many reasons. They don't have, they don't produce TMAO. They don't come with the very pro-inflammatory new 5GC. They, you know, there are a lot of, there's, you know, less saturated fat, less cholesterol, there's no cholesterol. There's, you know, all of those things that make them a, a better choice. In my view, they shouldn't necessarily be a part of your daily diet, but they can allow a little flexibility when you're going out or when you, you know, I made some of these sausages when my, um, my son-in-law's parents came from Bulgaria, they live on meat and cheese. They were, they can't speak a word of English. They were coming over. I did a barbecue, lots of salads and beautiful foods, but I made some sausages. I don't think they knew they weren't meat sausages. They, they, I, I'm sure they thought they were just meat. And it, it was just nice to be, I mean, I had tofu, I had all of those other things, but something that, that was felt very comfortable for them. And so sometimes there is a good reason, you know, that they can be helpful foods. So I don't like to say, oh, you should never, ever use these because they can make life a little more um, you know, flexible, enjoyable, whatever, but they really shouldn't predominate in the diet. They should be more the occasional foods, except for the plant-based milks and yogurts and such, which I think definitely can be a, a part of the daily diet and be very healthy additions. Yeah, thank you so much, Brenda. Yes, <laughs> that, that, was, that was an excellent answer. So...